Hi, it's Steve. Today we'd like to show you how to change the light socket on your dryer. It's a really easy repair. Let me show you how we do it. Now before we begin this repair, we will need to disconnect power to the dryer. So either pull it far enough forward that you can unplug it, or locate the electrical panel, turn off the appropriate breaker, or remove the appropriate fuses. And once we've done that, our next step will be to open up the door so we can lift off the main top to access the front panel. Now with the door opened up, we now have access to the two screws that go up through the top of that front panel to secure it to the main top. So using the number two Phillips screwdriver, remove those screws. Once we remove those, we can close the door up and then we'll remove the top. So just lift up on the front of the top Pull it slightly forward and then hinge it from the back here where it connects to the top of the side panels. Once you hold that free, just tilt it up a little farther and that will remove it from these three tabs attached to the console. They fit into three slots across the back of that top. And these two portions on the main top tucking underneath here. So we'll set that top aside. Now next we're going to remove two screws that secure that front panel to the cabinet. The number two Phillips screws, one on each side, and they're just down about an inch and a half from the top. Be sure to support that front panel as you remove the second screw. Now the weight of the drum is pushing down on the front bearing which is attached to that front panel so you may need to lift up just slightly on that drum to allow that front panel to tilt forward. There are two hooks on the bottom of the base frame that we need to lift that panel off of but there's also a harness attached on the left side here so just use caution that we don't pull that harness too much. And we can pivot that panel around And from there, we can disconnect that wire harness so that we can do the repair. Now with the front panel supported, we're ready to disconnect that wire harness. So we'll start by just sliding this tab out of the way. That will expose the wires that are attached to the door switch. So we'll first of all, remove those. Using a pair of needle nose pliers, so we can pull the wire terminal off of the switch and pull on the terminal, not the wire itself. Take note of where those wires are located. Now as well, we have a single black wire here with its own connector, and we need to separate that. Now the best way to separate that harness connector is with a small flat page screwdriver. And if you look at that connector, you'll see that there are two spots opposing each other that have a little plastic tab in them. That acts as a lock to hold the connector together. So if we depress those tabs while pulling on the opposite end of that harness, we can separate that. So now we'll take that whole front panel assembly and we'll set it on a suitable work surface and we can change out that part. Now with that front panel laying face down on a suitable surface, we'll next remove the remaining wire to that door switch, which would be the center one. Again, we'll use our pliers, pull on the terminal. Now next we need to thread that harness out from underneath this bearing assembly. Now to do so, it's easier just to pry that bearing assembly slightly away from that front panel. What we need to do when we reinstall the new socket and harness is to make sure that the harness comes out through between those two plastic pegs. So to do so, we'll probably need to lift that whole plastic housing away from the metal front panel. So our next step will be to remove the bowl. Just set that aside. We can remove the retaining screw that secures that socket to the front panel. 
And again, we'll have to lift that top bearing away from the front panel. So make sure there's no signs of any cracks in it before you start pulling on it. This is just a friction fit. We don't need to remove it completely. We just need to loosen it enough that we can pull that harness out. Now, once we get around to the lower half of that housing, again, we'll need to lift that up enough to pull that harness out from between those two plastic pegs that we showed you. Now, to aid in separating that housing from the front panel, you may want to use a stiff putty knife. And if we come through from the back side, we should be able to just pry up on that. So if we take that putty knife and just carefully pry on that plastic housing and supporting it from the outside at the same time, you just need to pop that up a bit, just enough that it will clear those plastic pegs. Now once that harness is free, Peel that out. And remove it. We won't discard that just yet. We'll take the new harness. We'll begin by threading that underneath that housing in the same manner that we removed the old one. Point, you can line up that socket with the opening in the top bearing. Just tuck that up through, then line up the mount with the screw hole. Now, once we have that socket attached, we can then go back to the harness and position it properly. where we need to make sure that we tuck the tail end of that harness up in between those two plastic pegs. And while holding those in place, you just make sure that we tuck that harness up in between those pegs and then snap that housing back down tight up against the front panel. So just make sure that stays in place. And with the bearing and the lower housing firmly attached to that front panel, we'll move to the next step, which is to transfer the harness connector from the old wire harness to the new one. basically need to remove that plastic piece from that old harness. If you're fortunate enough to have this type of a tool that you can slide over that terminal, that will collapse the two arrowhead supports that hold that wire connector inside of the housing. If not, take a small jeweler screwdriver, go down through that opening and just bend back those two tabs.
Basically, that's the shape of that wire terminal, and it fits up through that hole in the bottom of the housing, and then locks in place on that collar. Essentially, what this tool does is flatten out those two tabs. and allows us to pull that plastic housing right out over top of it. Again, you can accomplish the same thing with a tiny jeweler screwdriver. Just bend those tabs in out of the way. And that will allow us to slide that plastic piece off. Once we've done that, we can discard that old socket. Before we install it on the new wire, inspect those two little metal tabs to make sure they're flared out. When installing that plastic housing, we put the narrow end on first, press it firmly down onto that wire end, and then just give it a little tug to make sure that it's locked in place. And normally you can look through that opening on the side and see that those little arrowhead tabs have caught onto the shoulder of that housing. So next, we'll reattach that single wire from that harness to the door switch. Make sure that terminal is attached securely. We'll tuck that black one back out of the way, ready to reconnect to the main wire harness. Now that we have everything lined up, remember to reinstall the light bulb. Make sure it's not cross-threaded in the socket. Tighten it finger tight. Now we're ready to put the front panel back on the dryer. So next we'll reattach the wires to that switch. Pull that guard out of the way. back into place, make sure that tab slides into that slot. And then that single wire harness will line up those two tabs with the appropriate spaces on the opposite end of that. Push it in until it locks in place. So next we're going to tilt that front panel back into place and we're going to line up the little square hole close to the edge of that front panel and sit it over that little metal tab that protrudes out past the base. Be sure that we don't put any extra strain on that harness as we're tilting that front panel into place. Now, once we have both sides engaged, make sure the wire harness tucks safely into place. As we tilt that front panel towards the drum, we'll need to lift up on that drum slightly to allow the bearing to slide in under the edge of the drum. Then next, we'll reattach it with the retaining screws. And now we're ready to put the main top back on. So again, we're putting that main top on. We want to make sure that we catch the edge of that top panel and slide it in underneath that rear support. At the same time, we're going to engage those three tabs on the bottom of the console with the three slots on the back of that top. So hook those in first. Center that top with the console. and then make sure we pull it up far enough that we can engage that support piece. Push it back into place. And that should line up perfectly side to side. You can then open up the door and secure it with the two screws through the top of the front panel. 
As you push that screw up through, you'll see it come through the top of the front panel. Should line up with the hole in the top. Tighten it securely, close the door up. We're now ready to push the dryer back into place, reconnect the power, and your repair is complete.